Okay, I'm hoping that my voice is much better. I really hope so. Here's uh, part four. Frustrating tea parties. After arriving at Herscher's laboratory, I gave Raymond my letter for Ferdinand and then got to work making new prototype magic tools. Wait a minute, let me just make sure I did. <laughs> I don't know why I thought I didn't hit the button. Right now, Raymond was researching a magic tool that would shine various lights when a certain time came. It would project colors onto the pages of the books so that even the most obsessive reader would, sh would stare up in surprise, offering the perfect opportunity for someone to snatch the book from their hands and end their reading time. I'd wanted to prioritize making a tool that would automatically return the books to their respective shelves, but my attendants had fervently disagreed. According to them, my library would absolutely need one of these light, shiny magic tools. Yes! Considering how obsessive you are with books, yes, you would definitely need that. <coughs> research the light, shiny magic tool first, Herscher said. Then you can research the magic tool for returning books. Is that your assessment, Professor Herscher? Raymond asked, I couldn't agree more. They both immediately concurred with my attendance since they were the ones preparing the meals. I can understand having a weakness for delicious food, but at least try to disguise it. Besides, I'm the one who gets them to make all the meals for you. <laughs> well, I must be off, Raymond said. I need to go to the library to research the light magic tool. I should go as well, I added. That way I can ask Schwartz and Weiss about the doc. Uh, Raymond is more than capable of working on your behalf, my lady. Anyway, has the royal family not forbidden you from visiting the library? If you wish to read books, we may return to your room. I don't think they forbidden her from the library. They just forbidden her from the underground archive. Because in order to be able to go down there, she has to be able to use the keys. And she can't use all three keys at once. So, I don't think there's no need in banning her from the library. It's just banning her from the archive. Because even with her surplus of mana, she wouldn't be able to override the keys and be able to use them all at once. And go down there by herself, you know? Oh, I want to go read. I want to go too. I slapped my shoulders. Being told that I couldn't go somewhere just made me want to go there even more. Sure, there were enough books in my room to keep me occupied for now. But the moment I finished them, my inability to visit the library would really start wearing me down. Lady Rosemary, well, you're not going to deliver those documents to Professor Herscher, Lazletta asked, handing me a stack of papers. It was a transcription of all the research on Schwartz and Weiss. Professor, researcher, Professor Herscher, this is research left behind by someone who studied Schwartz and Weiss in, pa in, pa in the past, I said. You may only borrow it, so transcribe whatever you need to wish to keep. I intend to show this to Ferdinand eventually, so I cannot let you have it permanently. Where did you find these documents? I do not recall them being in the library's second floor. They were in a closed stack archive, I am told. Professor Solange lent them to me. Herschel looked over the papers and then blinked. Oh, yes. I often used to send my disciples to seek documents, but I had never considered Solange myself. Or consulted Solange myself. Just how many documents are in this closed stack archive? Well, it contains material on valu so valuable that it must be preserved with magic tools. Professor Solange was previously unable to confirm its actual contents, but that has changed now that Schwartz and Weiss are run moving again. And a new arch librarian is providing additional money. You should go talk to her. <coughs> the library had been suffering from mysterious mana shortage back when Solange was the only one protecting it, which had meant she was unable to supply the closed stack archive with the mana it needed. Many of the documents had started to deteriorate as a result. Hortensia now had her hands full trying to ensure that everything was adequately supplied. Keeping Schwartz and Weiss operational wasn't enough. So, in other words, the library still needs more mana. Lady Rose, mind you say that you plan to deliver these papers to Ferdinand, but surely he is in no position to be doing research. Oh, yeah, I agree. At present, he has neither a room nor a hidden room, meaning he has nowhere to do any research. However, as he wrote in his letter that he wishes to do some nonetheless, I thought it best to preserve some documents for him. Once he did eventually receive a hidden room, my first course of action was to be was going to be cram was going to be to cram Leslie full of documents, tools, and materials, then head straight to Aaron's box castle. Dude, you're not going to be able to do that. They'll see you as an invasion. Oh, my God. Though I doubt uh, Aaron's box will permit me to fly over in my high base, so that will remain but a dream. Yeah, and besides, uh, Aaron's box is dead right now. So, yeah, has nobody told her? Oh, boy. Those who move to other duchies remain in guest rooms until they are officially married. I continued. Ferdinand, however, was sent over much sooner than usual. He will surely suffocate without somewhere to retreat to. If only there were something we could do for him. 
In my eyes, we were both expressing our worry for Ferdinand, but Hersher seemed to recover in a heartbeat. I shall carry out research in his place and strive to do it every single day in his honor to stay completely unfazed. Perhaps you should return to your dormitory and read, Lady Rosemine. If you have any other useful documents, do bring them over. Oh, and you would do well to send a report to Frolarm sooner rather than later. What? Come on, let's talk about Ferdinand for a little while longer. Hersher began describing, describing the documents, determined not to look, not to back down. There was little else for me to do until Raymond finished his schematics. I couldn't make any prototypes without them, so I resigned myself to returning to my room and reading. I wanted to finish the books I was currently borrowing so that I could take out even more. As I walled away the time reading in my room, invitations for tea parties started to trickle in. The Royal Academy's socializing season was finally beginning. My attendants had consulted Charlotte's and formed our plans. The two of us were going to be attending together. At the same time, I arranged for a meeting with Fraud Alarm. As per Herster's instructions, I needed to give her a second report on the state of our research and point out that the first report for Ferdinand had not been delivered. Fraud Alarm must have taken a personal interest in the progress of our joint research, unlike when I was trying to schedule my exam with her, so you agreed to see me pretty much instantly. As soon as I arrived to meet Fraud Alarm, she extended a hand to me requesting my report. She was wearing gloves and made no attempt to read the letter then and there. In truth, she was acting like Ferdinand did when on guard against an attempted poisoning. Professor Frawlarm, it seems that the first report has still not reached Ferdinand, I said. Have you sent it to Ehrensbach yet? Is that so? She replied, deliberately avoiding my gaze. Our scholars must be slacking. I certainly did send it. I put a hand on my cheek and sighed. In that case, I may need to consult Lady Detlinde, since the apathy from the scholars of a greater duchy is quite troubling indeed. It must be especially troublesome for you as someone who specializes in collecting and organizing intelligence. Indeed, quite troublesome, Frawlarm said, glancing my way with a fake smile plastered on her face. Incidentally, Lady Rosemine, though what me through what means are you keeping in contact with Lord Ferdinand? He is my guardian. He is only natural that I would have various means of communicating with him. Revealing any more than that would be like like giving Shusari a shield to Leidenshaft, no? Frawlarm huffed, then turned away from me sharply, an unsurprising reaction considering that I had more or less said you don't need to know that, just what are you trying to pull? On a more important note, I continued, moving the conversation along, do you know where Lady, when D Lady Detlinde will be finishing her classes? Now that is what I would call giving Shitsari a shield to the Leidenschaft, she retorted. You are aware that I need to schedule a cousin's tea party with her and deliver her hairpins, correct? And as you should also know, I am busy with joint research and my schedule is becoming increasingly packed with plans for other tea parties. As such, I would consider my question to be nothing but reasonable. That said, if you are insistent on keeping quiet, then please inform Lady Detlinda that I will have my attendants deliver the hairpins some other time. My attendants only had a brief opportunity to socialize this year, and they were striving to do as much as they could in that time. I had been focused on my books when they were com coming to me with requests, so I had absentmindedly agreed to everything that was put before me. As a result, my schedule was not completely packed. <coughs> Truth be told, I much preferred the idea of reading more books to attending tea parties, but I needed to socialize with as many duchies as possible. My aim was to improve the horrible reputation that was plaguing both Sylvester and Ehrenfest as a whole. In that regard, I was fully on board with delaying a tea party with Ehrensbach, a duchy that was bound to spread negative rumors about us anyway. I was willing to attend the cousin's tea party since I'm curious about how Ferdinand is doing in Ehrensbach, but I can't say that I'm too enthusiastic about it. Sister, we are receiving so many invitations to tea parties, Charlotte informed me upon my return to the dormitory. Which will you attend? There are more, I asked, taking the invitations she had extended to me. I was already due to attend so many, and I thought of sitting through even more, and sur surrendering even more of my reading time was especially annoying. Charlotte gave me a consoling smile. Socializing season has just properly begun. Almost all duchies know from their dormitory supervisors that you are busy with your joint research projects, so they must want to secure a meeting with you as early as they can. I mean, yeah, I'm kind of with Rosemine on this one. I would, if I had to choose between socializing with people I don't want to know or anything like that and reading books, I'd rather read books all day. <coughs> that made sense after all. As the interdutchy tournament grew nearer and nearer, everybody would end up too busy with their research to attend tea parties. Furthermore, Bernhilde added with a smile, this is the first time you have not needed to return home for the dedication ritual. I don't think I'm physically capable of socializing every day, I said. I'd probably end up sick. Although I was getting healthier, biting off more than I could chew would be dangerous. 
If we didn't set aside at least two days of reading from each day of tea parties, then I would probably collapse out of the blue in a at a terribly inconvenient moment. Indeed, Brunhilde replied, we do not know when a summons might come from Dunkelfelder or the royal family, so we cannot pack our schedule too tightly. Together, my attendants said, I and I continued this conversation while gradually working out how to allocate our time. We were interrupted only when an ordinance flew into the room. <coughs> this is that uh, Lende from Ehrensbach, the bird said. I, too, have very little time in my schedule. Let us have our tea party four days from now in the afternoon. In other words, Fraulein had passed along our message. I wasn't particularly happy about Detlende setting a date for our tea party without speaking to my attendants or checking when I was free. I can't refuse this, can I? It was at your request, was it not, Sister Charlotte asked? I will inform Wilfried that a date has been decided. Maybe, but this wasn't my intention, I sighed. My only option was to adjust my schedule accordingly and then give Detlende my acknowledgement. Today I was going to be attending tea parties of bottom-ranking duchies, but not without Charlotte. Aaron's box inconsiderate actions had required us to make a few changes to our schedule. Given that Aaron Fist had taken a neutral stance during the Civil War, some bottom-ranking duchies apparently thought it would be easier to kiss up to us than to the faction that had come out victorious. According to Charlotte, we wanted to bring as many bottom-ranking duchies under our wing as we as was feasible. The problem was, I wasn't sure how to go about doing this. Aaron was in the midst of reshaping its inter duchy relations, and Charlotte didn't know enough about the subject to teach us teach me anything of use. This is one of numerous problems that had arisen from our sudden rise to the duchy rankings. Lady Rosemine, famous saint of Aaron we have long ex awaited this opportunity to speak with you. For the most part, every tea party we attended started with the other duchies singing Aaron praises. They commended our suites and paid especially close attention to, to Rosina's music, which they asked to hear more of. I even noticed that musicians straining the their musicians straining their ears as they desperately attempted to memorize what they could. Some books were exchanged as well. I was not able to bring a book last year since everything happened so suddenly, but this year I had received permission from the Ab ahead of time, the representative of the other duchy explained. Naturally, I wanted to be on good terms with any duchy that was willing to lend me books. I accepted their generous offer with a smile, then lent them some Aaron Fest books in return. As it turned out, they were particularly excited to read them as our books were now popular among the top-ranking duchies. As expected, it was best to establish our trends at the very top and then let them trickle down. By doing this, reading will spread even further. Unfortunately, my sincere interest lasted only as long as our conversation about books. The bottom-ranking duchies were very, very curious about how we had climbed the ranks, and once they began their legitimately obstinate barrage of questions, I was forced to put on a fake smile. It was just so sudden, someone remarked. Is there some secret technique that Aaronfest used to climb so far up the ranks in such a number of years? To think you are balancing three joint research projects with greater duchies, the representative continued. You truly are exceptional, Lady Rosemine. Not only are you responsible for many trends and in charge of several research projects, but you have also get proven that you are kind-hearted enough to continue serving as High Bishop. Even after being adopted, I must kneel before the astute eyes of Ob Ehrenfest who identified your talents and adopted you. Everyone says that Ob Ehrenfest is a cruel Archduke who forces all Archduke candidates other than his own children into the temple. How tragic. Each time someone had bad mouth Sylvester, I disputed whatever rumor they were rep repeating and clarified that all of our Archduke candidates passed to the farming villages for spring prayer and the harvest festival. No matter how much I argued my case, however, nobody believed me. Bizarrely enough, they would always reply with something like, you truly are kind to protect him like that. But I'm not. It's all true. Are you even listening to me? Why well, can't so... Even if... I think even if Wilfred and Charlotte both attested to this, I don't think they would agree, They would listen. Over and over again, Sylvester was insulted. Wilfred and Charlotte were indirectly accused of ha having easy lives, and I was upheld as a profound saint, the lone jewel of an otherwise cruel family. I continued to speak out against such ideas, but I might as well have been re reasoning with the brick wall, and the tea party ended with me feeling in a worse mood than when I entered. I'm just glad that I made it through without unleashing an indiscriminate kill-everyone-crushing wave. I really did a good job keeping myself under control. Yes, you did, because I imagine that anybody bad-mouthing Sylvester, your dad, adopted dad, but still your dad, and this guy took you in and kept you safe from being executed and gave you essentially everything while still keeping, you know, your health at check, your, giving you the job as the high bishop, keeping for, helping to keep Ferdinand safe as well during all this, everything. It's just everything. You owe Sylvester a ton. So, yeah, anybody bad-mouthing him is going to get it. 
I return to my room and we gather together to re reflect on our most recent tea parties. Am I the only one who has to endure listening to such malicious words, I asked, looking at my attendants who had attended the tea party with me? Did they say the same to Charlotte's face, I wonder? Brunhilde shook her head. They would not dare mention such rumors to the Ob's own children. I expect they would feel comfortable saying them to you, as they are hoping to get on your good side, as you are an adopted daughter, and many believe you are being abused. Her tone was noticeably harsher than usual, and although both she and Riarda were smiling at me, I could tell that they had been equally frustrated by the tea parties. The Ob and his children by blood were not the only ones being treated with such contempt, came her voice. It may have seemed that they were idolizing you, Lady Rosemont, but even those heralding you as a saint were being backhanded. <coughs> Grisha, they called you a saint to emphasize that you were raised in the temple. They mocked you for protecting the Ob, insinuating that you were merely blind to the worst treatment you receive and proclaimed you to be very convenient and freely available source of mana. My initial thought was that Grisha was being too neg negative in her evaluation, but she had felt strongly enough to speak up instead of maintaining her usual silence. It seemed wise to take her input seriously. You are most likely being viewed as a quiet, weak-minded saint who exists only as a puppet for her guardians, Grisha continued. You will need to consider the risk of someone trying to extort or even kidnap you. Understood, responded, not I, but Lenore. Yeah, y'all need to keep an eye on that. After our reflection, we spoke more about how people badmouth the Ob's biological children behind their backs. As I understood it, Charlotte and I were deliberately being made to attend tea parties separately to lure the duchies hosting us into a false sense of security. I was well aware that getting such duchies to expose their maliciousness was a righteous cause, but I was finding it miserable having to say, You're all very kind, but Ob Fest is not that kind of man over and over and over again. I vented my frustrations while taking a short reading break, then had to attend even more frustrating tea parties. If someone had warned me that this was going to be my fate, then I would have rather missed socializing season entirely. Ah, I wish they had summoned me back to the temple this year. I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to deal with that either. I would have snapped. You were a stronger person than I am, Rosemary, because you would have. I would have snapped by then. I would have been yelling at them and crushing them. As our misery continued, it came time for Netlinda's tea party for cousins. I was well aware that I needed to attend whether I wanted to or not, but in my current state, I was really starting to doubt that I would be able to bless her marriage or Ferdinand, or her marriage to Ferdinand. It was going to take my utmost con concentration to not accidentally say, "Give me back my precious brain." <coughs> Matthias, Lorenz, Miriela, and Grisha will sit this one out, I said. It will not be wise to reveal that several children from the former Veronica faction have become my retainers all at once. Indeed, we do not know how much Aaron's Bach knows about the Purge. Hiding what we can is certainly wise. How much information would we give, and how much will we keep to ourselves? Those are the questions I discussed with Wilfred and Charlotte. Okay, Rosemary, no matter how annoyed you get, don't let it show on your face. Keep things peaceful so that Ferdinand doesn't suffer more in Aaron's Bach. After carving this holy oath into my heart, I made it my way to the Ehrensbach tea party alongside my two siblings. <coughs> Good day, everyone. Good day, Lady Dentlande, Wolfrey replied, greeting her as a representative. Thank you ever so much for inviting us. We were promptly directed to our seats. Meanwhile, Dentlande was looking notably pleased. She saw our attendants handing over packages, smiled and asked whether they were her hairpins. Today, my musician will be playing a new Ehrensbach piece, Detlinde announced. It is a love song that Lord Ferdinand composed for me, dedicated to Geduld. After giving a dainty laugh, I want to hit, I want to hit her. I want to hit her! I want to hit her so much! I know she wasn't the one who organized the marriage, but, yeah, I just, she's just, a, I hate her. I hate her, I hate her, I hate her. Stroking her gorgeous blonde hair... She then turned to her musician, who nodded in response and attempted and started to play. It was the same song about nostalgia that I had previously heard in music class, and it seemed I wasn't the only one connecting the dots. We heard this in music class, while Wolf and remarked. Indeed, Detlinda said pridefully, I got all of our musically talented students to learn it so that weird of its origins would, would spread. Lord Ferdinand gave me this wonderful gift during the feast marking the start of winter, so they did not have long to practice. I'm sure it was quite a struggle for them. <coughs> <clears throat> Did Lenny went on to sip her tea and take de uh, demonstrated bites of their prepared sweets. We tried them for ourselves soon after, which elicited an excited smile from our host. So, she continued, is it after our spring star binding that Lord Ferdinand's personal chefs are coming to Ehrensbach? Excuse me? I don't think she was ever in the cast, in the cards. Or I think that was ever in the cards. 
The chefs who had previously worked for Ferdinand in the temple were now working for Hartman. I was in no position to discuss the movements of other people's personnel, so there was nothing I could say in response. Maybe I would need to send a met cautionary letter? Did Linda give a satisfied sigh and then sat down her cup? I was initially depressed about being engaged to Lord Ferdinand, but as of late, I have been feeling a lot more, little more optimistic about our union. You were depressed, I asked? But of course, I'm going to be the next Archduchess of Ehrensbach, yet my father chose to pair me with a much older man from a much lower ranking duchy. A man who has no mother and was sent to Ehrenfest Temple. My disappointment was only natural. I want to smack her. I want to smack her. I was more surprised than I was annoyed. To want to me, Ferdinand was an excellent Archduke candidate who had come first in class each year he attended the Royal Academy. All the while being a creative, mad scientist who would do anything from scholar work to night work to serving as a representative of an ob. However, to those who worked from Ehrenfest and thus hadn't seen all the work he'd done, <coughs> and those who hadn't been at the Royal Academy to witness his great feats, he was apparently a terrible pick. I guess that's how he looks from the outside. I was quite relieved when I met him in person and saw his kind personality and intelligence for myself, that Linda continued. He did vow to dedicate himself to me, after all. I assume she thinks he's kind... Because he fell, she fell victim to his fake smile. I mean, this misunderstanding, this misunderstanding is exactly what we want. But at the same time, I really want her to know that he's playing her like a fiddle. <clears throat> of course, this deception had made her more optimistic about marrying Ferdinand, so I silenced the mischievous voice in my head and instead started promoting his incompetence. There remain countless legends about his accomplishments in the Royal Academy, for example... Yes, I know of them already. I gathered intelligence to find out more about his true nature and was very surprised. Given his many accomplishments, I see no reason why he cannot stand by my side as my husband. Now I was annoyed. He's the amazing one here. The question should be whether you are worthy of standing beside him. Again, I swallowed my words. Today was turning out to be the ultimate test of patience. Yes, keep that in your head, girl. Don't be saying it a lot, even though you really want to. <laughs> I wish you would say it. Just a single look on her face. Having noticed my internal struggle and fake smile, Charlotte leaned into the conversation and promptly moved things along. If you were initially depressed about your engagement, Lady Dentlinden, then was your heart perhaps set on another? I remember a similar tale in Royal Academy love stories. If you have any particular affectionate memories, then I would be delighted to hear about them. Dentlinden blinked a few times before averting her gaze, her dark green eyes looked downcast. Uh, yes, of course it was. The man even returned my affections, but I am the next Archduchess. I have no choice but to marry the man who my father chose for me. No matter how wondrous that past flame may have been, no matter how desperately he conveyed his feelings to me, I cannot give my hand to someone who does not suit me. Did he actually like you, or is that you just being a narcissist and painting it in the way you want it to be? I wonder. Anybody know? I understood this even back then, but our parting was still so very painful. Oh, how I loathed La Libeskill, the goddess of binding, for having brought us together, knowing that we were destined to be separated. There was now a vacant look in Detlinda's eyes, but her thoughts had presumably wandered to her past lover. The two of them had apparently said their farewells during the summer, so this mysterious man must have been an Ehrensbach noble rather than someone from the Royal Academy. I think it was a knight from the Sovereignty, if I remember correctly. I guess this engagement has been hard for her, too. I'd assume that Ditlindy had everything to gain from her, from her <coughs> upcoming marriage since she hadn't settled on an escort and there hadn't been any rumors circulating through the Academy about her being romantically involved with someone. In reality, despite what everyone else thought, this engagement wasn't desired by either participant. Actually, she's not wrong about that. I couldn't help but sigh how cruel this world could be. Thus, partially for the sake of my lost love, I must become an excellent object, Lindy concluded, making her resolve clear. I was slightly moved, but also suddenly worried. Her repeated assertion about becoming the next ob suggested that the current ob Aaron's box condition was far from stable. I decided to broach the matter. Speaking of which, how fares ob Aaron's box health? I was worried when Ferdinand was asked to move to Aaron's box so suddenly. Ferdinand would most likely be able to sustain him with potions, but it was unlikely that Aaron's box would trust the con concoctions of another duchy. He wasn't even describing the op's health in his letters to me, so I was concerned about whether the handover had gone over smoothly. That Linda heaved a tragic sigh. He certainly cannot be described as well. Thankfully, Lord Ferdinand has made reasonable progress with his administrative work, so I would assume he is at peace. 
I see. For her to be describing the Ob as sickly here at a tea party, so sick, a sickly here at a tea party must have been extremely unwell indeed. He is at peace. Hello. Why would she say he is at peace unless he's dead? Airfest already knew this from Ferdinand's sudden departure, but for what I understood, no other duchies were aware. At the very least, it wasn't spoken about in the Royal Academy. I wish to return to Ehrensbach immediately, but Mother has said that as an ex ob I must focus on socializing. Dead continued, It was only natural that she would want to rush to the side of an ill family member. Still, despite all the stress she must have been dealing with, she had somehow managed to contain those feelings, focus on her classes, and put effort into socializing. Maybe I would need to reevaluate my opinion of her a little. No. If you knew the whole story, girl... Or the fact that Ob Ehrensbach is dead right now, you wouldn't be thinking that way. <clears throat> Personally, if someone had told me that my dad was unwell, I would have rushed through my classes and headed straight back to Ehrenfest where I could have stayed at his bedside no matter what he said. Thus, during this year's graduation ceremony, I must carry myself in a manner befitting the next Ob Ehrensbach. <clears throat> I wish you well in your efforts. That said, do you not think it's Aaron Fest's duty to assist me with captivating my audience? Um, assist you how? I asked, blinking. I could tell that Detlundi viewed her request as being very straightforward, but I didn't have a clue what she was talking about. I turned to Wilfred and Charlotte, but they were just as uncertain. I'm assuming she's talking about the hairpins? Irritated by her confusion, Detlundi continued in a sharper tone. I am asking that you teach me how to make my face don't shine when I dance. That was how you drew so much attention to yourself during whirling class, was it not? Personally, I considered it gaudy and perhaps even need, needy dis, even needy display, but I cannot deny its effectiveness. Will such theatrics not be essential to my performance as the goddess of light during this year's dedication world? <laughs> I was stunned silent, being able to comprehend what she had just said. Um, what? If you attempt something like that, then forget the goddess of light. You're going to be more like the goddess of neon lamps. I mean, you'll end up being so overly flashy. It might get you a lot of attention, sure, but I don't think any of it will be positive. Wolfrey and Charlotte were wearing similar looks of disbelief. Lady Detlende, Wolfrey said, if you saw Rosemind practice, then I think you would understand that what you are suggesting will make you stand out for the, all the wrong reasons. I do not believe you should do something like that at your graduation, in the presence of the royal family and other obs. Oh my, Wilfried, will you really not help me in my time of need, Detlindy asked, faking, feigning surprise. Even then, her exaggerated display was nothing compared to what the rest of us were feeling. Does she really intend to turn herself into a whirling glow stick? Yes. Yes, that's exactly what she's doing, because why else would she want to do it? Because she saw that Rosemine stood out, and she wants to be able to stand out more than Rosemine, because I guess she fears Ro sees Rosemine as a rival or something, I don't know. I do not believe that is the issue here, I said. Oh, do you not wish to teach me, Detlinde asked, fixing me with a glare. Are you so against the idea of sharing the spotlight? What are you talking about? This During the dedication whirling, the spotlight is going to be on you and the others. What Rosemine's not going to be in the spotlight for that. Now, if you're talking about sharing the spotlight in general, nobody's going to care. No, that is not what I meant. If you wish to make your face stone shine, then you need only fill them with mana, no? <coughs> <coughs> I will not be fooled so easily. There must be some method you use to make so many shine at once. You relied on a magic tool of some sort, I presume. Uh, no. Delinde went on to describe how the many rainbow face stones in my hair stick had started to shine and said that such a thing could not possibly have happened just from me channeling mana into them. We need to either masterfully change the subject or outright deceive her. I was trying to figure out what to say when Charlotte suddenly leaned forward and said in her low voice, Lady Ditlinde, please keep what I'm about to say tell you to yourself. Ditlinde similarly leaned closer, her eyes sparkling. I knew there was a secret. The truth is, on the day of that unusual display, my sister was exceptionally ill. She not, could not keep her mana under control. Thus, the face stones truly were filled naturally. There was no magic tool that made them shine. So she collapsed after whirling because because she had not been able to keep her mana from flowing out. Yes, that wasn't a lie, but it sure felt like one. Charlotte was making it sound as though I had some kind of terrible disease. Did Linda get both Charlotte and me a suspicious look, indicating that she wasn't convinced? Wolverine must have assumed this was a good moment for him to step in as he nodded and said, that's why Rosemine wouldn't be able to make 
Her face don't shine, shine now even if she wanted to. She's all better. You know, if you really are set on doing it yourself, then why not get some cheap face stones that can't hold much mana? What are you doing? Are you trying to turn her into the goddess of neon lamps? Yes, because then she'll make a fool of herself. Charlotte and I instinctively looked at one another. We were both concerned, but Wilfrey was just doing his best to help her with the knowledge he had. This introduces the risk that might turn to gold dust if you pour too much mana into them, he said, unmistakably serious. But they'll shine more easily. A splendid idea, Detlinda said, clapping her hands together. Ah, she's actually going for it to do it. It will require a great deal of mana to make even face stones of a lower quality light up like that, Charlotte said, trying to appear to appeal to Detlinda's better judgment. I do not believe there is any need for you to use as much to use us so much for the dedication world. Detlinda smiled and shook her head. Fear not, I will practice ahead of time so that I can determine the lowest quality that does not turn into gold dust. Oh, and may I see the hairpins I'll be wearing for my graduation ceremony, she asked cheerfully. Wolfrey's attendant got straight to work, and after various checks, Detlinda's apprentice attendant, Martina, accepted the box. I intend to debut these at a tea party consisting only of top-ranking duchies, Detlinda said. Oh, dang it. In that case, we will need to show your attendants how they are worn, I replied. Brunhilde? After responding with a brusque nod, Brunhilde started teaching Martina, having been through this process countless times before, for Eglantine's and Adolphine's attendants, among others. Still, Lady Rosemine, your rainbow face stones truly are wonderful, Detlandy remarked. Should I ask my fiancé for a similar ornament, I wonder? I am sure he will be willing to make one for you after your starbine ceremony. Oh my, only after? I took this opportunity to complain about a matter of great importance to me. Well, as Ferdinand is staying in a guest room until then, he has no workshop, no ingredients, and no tools of which to work. There is nothing he can do. Ideally, he would at least have a workshop for doing research, but... Ah, there is no helping it then. I had hoped that the allure of a rainbow face stone ornament would encourage her to prepare a workshop at once, but her response hadn't sounded very positive. How unfortunate. Speaking of research, Detlinda continued, how is your project with Ehrensbach doing? I must say I am disappointed that you have not yet have yet to send us a single report. I delivered my second report to Professor Frarlong several days ago, I said, turning to Wilfred and Charlotte for support. They both nodded, confirming that I was speaking the truth. She assured me that she sent the first to Ehrensbach, but has she really not sent a word to you? That is an unusual way to treat one's Archduke candidates. I think she would send them to Ehrensbach without showing them to me first? It also seems that my first report never reached Ferdinand. I struggle to believe that a greater duchy such as Ehrensbach has any inattentive scholars, but I would be very appreciative if you could investigate the matter as the next op. I made sure to add that it was possible that this was all a huge misunderstanding. Delinda gave a firm nod and said, I shall do just that. This research is being advertised as that of Lord Ferdinand's disciples, and anything that impacts my fiancé's reputation impacts my own as well. I'd rather his name not be sullied through this project of yours. To ensure that we meet his standards, Raymond is constantly sending him letters and reports, I replied. We will only be presenting that which receives his direct approval. Yes, you do that. Her phrasing is really getting on my nerves, but this might resolve our report incident, and it gives me an excuse to contact Ferdinand more frequently. All's well that ends well, I suppose. As I was feeling satisfied with our unexpected progress, Wolfried spoke with Detlinde. Uncle went to write Aaron's book as Lady Letizia's instructor. But how has that been going, he asked, eyeing her and her retainers carefully. He, um, has a tendency to be quite harsh when educating others, so I am a bit worried. I could tell that Wolfrey was actually trying to find out whether Detlinde knew about Letizia and the royal decree. Her retainers tensed up a little, but Detlinde herself merely rested the troubled hand on her cheek. I do not socialize with Letizia much, she said, so I could not tell you much about her. I departed for the Royal Academy as soon as winter socializing began. But according to the letters I've received, Lord Ferdinand is working rather hard in his administrative duties. Surely he has no time to be teaching some child. That pretty much confirmed it. That Lindy was completely blind to the significance of Ferdinand moving to Ehrensbach to teach Letizia. She didn't realize that she was only a temporary interim ob, and upon sensing this, Wolfrey gave her a sympathetic look. More importantly, look at this, Detlinda continued, redirecting the focus of our conversation. It was a gift given to me by someone from Lonzenov who visited Ehrensbach during the summer. What followed was a slurry of uninteresting chatter as Detlinda bragged about her duchy, her fiancé, or some other person with whom she was connected, then pointed out how she stood above them all as Ehrensbach's next ob. She clearly wanted us to praise her or give her advice on how to strengthen her duchy's influence. As her tea party continued, Detlinda made no attempt to inquire about or even mention the purge happening in Ehrenfest. I started to wonder whether she really was oblivious, whether Georgine was intentionally keeping her unaware and excluding her from the pl her plan. Probably is. 
Did Linda continue to pride on and on about herself and her position as the next Ob, and soon enough our meeting came to an uneventful end. That was tiring. Such was my first words upon our return to the Interfest dormitory. We had spent the entire tea party being expected to prop up our host, and as it, as it had been a private tea party without guests from other duchies, we had tr been treated entirely like a lesser inferior duchy. Well, everything went as Dead Lindy wished. It really had been exhausting. To me, the worst part had been when Dead Lindy started bragging about the legendary tales of Ferdinand, which she had apparently gathered from other students and those who had attended alongside him, as though they were based on her own accomplishments. I had only barely suppressed the urge to scream that he had still been from Arenfest when all those things had taken place. I was fearful of what she might know about Arenfest's current situation and prepared for her to start probing us, Charlotte said. But I evidently worried for nothing. Thank God for that. I shook my head. Lady Dentlinde might have been oblivious, but there were moments when her retainers seemed especially tense. I expect that some of them know more than she does. Wolfred frowned, his face clouded with concern. I know this isn't our problem, but I'm kind of worried about Lady Dentlinde. Is she going to be okay as the next ob when her own retainers are hiding as much from her? Perhaps they are doing it because she has only planned to be a temporary op, Charlotte said. Indeed, considering their behavior, I was fairly certain that Detlinda's retainers were actively hiding information from her. The real question was whether they were carrying out Ob Ehrensbach's will or enacting some plan by Georgine. I feel like that'll just make things worse when she eventually does find out, but Wilfrey trailed off. That is something for those in er of Ehrensbach to think about, I interjected with a sigh. As long as it doesn't impact Ferdinand, it's nothing for us to bother ourselves with. <coughs> Wolfrey glared at me. His dark green eyes really were just like Detlende's. Your tone was really cold, a little cold there, Rosemine. Aren't you worried about Lady Detlende? I could guess that Wolfrey related to Detlende in some regards. After all, he had once been kept in the dark, manipulated and fooled into tarnishing his own reputation. Unfortunately for him, I was so exhausted from dealing with our garbage that my heart was completely unmoved. The fact that I hadn't outright said she could explode for all I care deserved a medal, if you ask me. If she is still unawa so unaware despite her position as the next Ob and having so many retainers by her side, then it must be the will of Ob Ehrensbach. I am far more concerned about her doing something that results in Ferdinand getting punished by association. Uncle can manage. He's strong enough on his own. Hearing him worry about Detlindy but not Ferdinand made something inside of me snap. Uh-oh. Well, Fred, I think you messed up! Ferdinand is not in the same position that he was in before when he was in Arenfest. He, he has few people he can trust and no environment in which to make new magic tools. And on top of protecting himself, he must also protect Lo Lady Letizia. I think you seem cold, Wolfrey. I would rather be worried about his, he worry about his uncle, the man who had worked his fingers to the bone for his sake, than some nuisance who had no value to us other than being a way for us to contact Ferdinand. Wolfrey and I continued to glare at one another until Charlotte gave a heavy sigh. Brother, sister, neither one of you is being cold. You are simply worried about different people. The fact that you are fighting over something so trivial just goes to show how exhausted the two of you must be. Yeah, stand up to him, Rosemine. Put him in his place. Show him that you're the one who is not to be trifled with on this one. <laughs> Charlotte, you're right, my bad. Having been admonished by our little sister, Wilfred and I apologized to each other and then had our attendants brew tea so that we could calm down ourselves and start going over the tea party. By having Lady Detlinda, ignorant as she is, take center stage, they were able to hide their machinations, that is, Lady Georgine's actions and intentions. Even more thoroughly, this would normally be the case, I said. This is rather painful for Arenfest. We had spent the entire tea party pl paying lip service to Detlinda's boastful remarks, and learned absolutely nothing new about Ehrensbach in the process. That realization suddenly made me feel all the more tired. The tea parties didn't end there. Before I could even recover from the exhaustion of our time spent with Dedlinde, I found myself needing to meet with some middle and bottom wrecking duchies. I was still feeling absolutely miserable, so my fake smile was even more phony than usual. I wonder if they could notice that. I guess not, because they don't, they don't say anything. This time, our sweets were the focus of excessive praise, with the participants even asking for the recipe, I decided to mention that Dunkelfogger had developed its own kind of pound cake made with its own local specialty roweries. They used their local specialty. Why, that's splendid. I will get my chefs to follow their example at once. You certainly are on good terms with Dunkelfogger, Lady Rose. Mind you are even more collaborative on research. Even collaborating on research. We of Immerdink asked to join, but were refused. That we only wanted to be of some assistance. Every duchy was interested in our joint research, since it provided an excellent chance to deepen one's bonds with greater duchies. It was nice that this tea party wasn't just a slew of negative rumors about 
This wasn't just a slew of negative rumors about Sylvester and the rest of my family, unlike my meeting with the exclusively bottom-ranking duchies. But I didn't want to listen to non-stop whining from those who hadn't been allowed to join our research. Perhaps we will have an opportunity to collaborate next time, I, I noted, putting a swift end to this topic of conversation. From there, I started talking about Aaron Fest books. Some of the students here had already read our new volume after borrowing copies from Charlotte during tea other tea parties. Lady Liberty, Josh Brenner, I am told that you borrowed a copy from Charlotte as well, I said. Have you finished it already? Oh, yes, I did. Last year's volume of Royal Academy Love Stories was truly delightful, so I was on the edge of my seat for the new release. Lurity was here as an Archdiocese representative for Bur Josh Burr the Tenth, and she leaped at this opportunity to speak at length about Royal Academy love stories. Her light green eyes sparkling all the while. I was relieved to know that everyone was focused on books now. Lady Rosemond, how are things with your fiance, Lord Wilfrid? Lurity asked. Do you share a wondrous romance like in the stories? Oh, boy. These two are both dense when it comes to romance. We're free more so, because at least Rosemont understands it somewhat and could inherently be romantic if she wanted to, but Wolfrey is just just so dense. I couldn't help but falter in the face of so many hopeful stares. Um, our love is familial and nothing like what can be found in books. The said, is there not value in such stability? My mother says that stories should have dramatic peaks and valleys, but I would rather my own life be an even line. I was hoping that my lame response would make everyone tire of the discussion and move on, but Lurity continued to press me on the matter. Oh my, you would say that your romance is so plain despite that magnificent hair ornament he has given you? It is magnificent, isn't it? Someone said in agreement. It has so many rainbow face stones. Their love and passion is clear for all to see. No! Don't be getting any ideas! No! No, don't be spreading any rumors! No, we don't need this! No! Ew! No! No! They're still kids! Jesus Christ! Because members of the royal family and Greater Duchess had started gifting hairpins during the graduation ceremonies, students of middle and bottom ranking duchies were beginning to view hair ornaments as romantic objects that one received from one's lover. They measure love by the fanciness of one's hair ornament. That's news to me. No way can I ever tell them I got this from Ferdinand and not from my fiance Wolfrey. You can never say that! Take it to your grave! Keeping those thoughts in mind, I explained that my hair stick was a gift from all of my guardians, taking care to keep the details consistent with what I had already told others. This would more or less shatter the fantasies of these young girls, but I needed to emphasize that Ferdinand had designed it, else that Linda's inevitable hairpin disaster would give him a bad name. This hair stick was not a gift from Wolfried alone, I said. My guardians prepared the rainbow face stones, and my mentor Ferdinand designed the ornament. My, given how much they all must care about you, it may seem strange to think they sent you to the temple. You do not need to cover for your odd lady, Rosemary. We are on your side. She's not covering for him. She's not anywhere near him at this point. She could tell you all sorts of bad shit if she, if she was in that way, but no. Actually, she couldn't because it would still get back to her. It would still get back to him, but still. Once again, Sylvester was being treated as a villain. Having to correct people all the time was getting seriously exhausting. I do not know what the temples of other duchies are like, but at Aaronfest we take religious ceremonies very seriously, I said. I am not the only one who visits our temple. Well, Fred Charlotte and even the op himself goes there as well. I cannot believe the Aaronfest Archdugal family deigns to visit a temple. These buildings are so filthy. Hmm? That wasn't at all what I expected them to take away from that. Religious ceremonies are performed in the temple, I explained, and the duchy's harvest will suffer unless the Gibbs chalices in the central district, central district are supplied of mana. Arifest Temple lacked the mana for that after our blue priests and shrine maidens were moved to the Sovereign Temple. So we Archdew candidates are acting in their stead. Of course, I made sure to add that Wilfred and Charlotte likewise circled farming towns for spring prayer and the harvest festival. If your duchies are suffering from a smaller harvest, then I, must have, I would advise that you have your Archdew candidates do the same. But going to the temple and to farming towns is simply, I was feeling increasingly foolish for smiling and repeating the same thing over and over again when my words were only ever met with ignorant grimaces. To be frank, I was sick of all this non-stop complaining from people who didn't understand the importance of religious ceremonies or how bad things really were. It ticked me the heck off that these people couldn't grasp how much Wilfred and Charlotte had struggled to take my place. Even back when they had barely been able to control their mana. 
So, Lady Rosebud said Ember Diggs arched you can. Forget about the temple. I wish to discuss your joint research. What manner of research are you doing with the Greater Duchies? I shrugged. For our research with Dunkelfelger, we are focusing on the religious ceremonies that you all despise so much. We are not so opposed to religious ceremonies done in the Royal Academy. We have to, we have to perform the ritual for obtaining divine protection in class, so... Oh, I see. So it's the temple you take an issue with, huh? I spat on the inside, but then I was struck with an epiphany. Wait, I got it. It's perfect. As part of our joint research, Arianfest will be demonstrating a religious ceremony. Would you care to join? If we can obtain permission from Dunkelfelger, that is. Oh my, you would allow me to? The Ember Dink Archduke Canada asked with a bright smile, having been pleading to join for so long. She went on to say that it was very kind indeed that grumbled that Charlotte had refused to budge no matter how much she asked. If you are allowing Emmerdink, then I would like to join as well. If Meg can participate, then I will speak with our Archduke candidate. Joss Brenner has no Archduke candidates at present, so please allow me to participate as a representative. I smiled as everyone collectively asked for permission to join. Surprisingly enough, they didn't seem to mind participating in religious ceremonies when it meant they could put their names on our joint research. Of course, this all depends on us receiving Dunkelfugger's permission, I said. I will ask them, but you all must do the same. Permission will only be granted if your passion is adequately conveyed. Given that Dunkelfogger have relied on passionate appeals and the verbal equivalent of a human wave to wave attack to convince the king to send Ferdinand to Ehrensbach, I was sure it would em I would embrace a similar approach from these girls. At the very least, it seemed far more likely to work than me asking on my own. In this way, everyone would be able to participate in our religious ceremonies. Oh, and I'll need permission from the royal family, too. Dang! That one chapter! Jesus Christ, some of these chapters are huge! I wonder how far this one is. Oh, wait. Okay, so this one's not too bad. Uh, I'm still gonna put it off here. I will see everybody in the next one.